Welcome back everybody. This is part three of this uh, build project and what you're seeing here is the beautiful control board to this window unit air conditioner. I've been doing a little bit of reconnaissance before I started filming this video so I could you know kind of make sure that this is going to work but I think it will. Pretty much if you're unfamiliar what you're seeing here is a multi-point switch so it controls if you just have the fan on, if the compressor's got power, um, high and low. This switch up here is the thermostat control. You would normally set it to, you know, high or low or whatever you're gonna set it to. And this is pr pretty much what I'm gonna tap into. I've already checked the wiring and everything and these two red wires that are up in here are actually pretty much just a, you know, pass through for 120 volt, which is exactly what this temperature controller is designed to switch as a relay. So all I really have to do is pull 120 volt power off of, you know, the input wires. This right here is the uh, black input wire. This is the hot from the wall. I've already pulled that off. So the neutral goes all the way up into here into the uh, capacitor up here. This is actually a um, capacitor for the fan motor and for the uh, compressor. The neutral is going up to this. I feel like if I just tap 120 hot and 120 neutral off of those two, plug it into this, which is a 120 volt model. All I have to do is connect these two red wires into the relay cooling relay port on this. And as far as I'm concerned, this will turn on and off the air compressor based on the temperature of the water instead of this little switch turning on and off the compressor based on the temperature of the air, which is what this used to use. I'm gonna try to wire that up and see what happens. So in my collection, I have these uh, little heat shrink style connectors. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically connect this to this. This is the hot. And then I'm also gonna tap a small wire off of that that can run over to the temperature controller. What I might actually do, now that I'm thinking about it, I might just add a small connector on that that I can tap into, and then I can plug a connector into this, and that way I can kind of figure out where I'm gonna put this with a certain size cable later on. Maybe for right now, I'll just hardwire it, just have it setting right here just to test, and then I can extend the wires and do whatever I want. I like it when things are modular. I like it when things can be unplugged and moved around and all that. So, all right, I looked through my collection. I have some SJO wire. This is 18 gauge, 18.3 actually. 18.3 wire, not 18.3 plus a ground. It's actually just three wire, not four. That was always a fun thing when I was working at Lowe's. I think this will work perfectly. I don't need the ground in it technically, but you know, It'll be in there if I need it. And this will be easy because I can just have this plugging in here and then I can have this run to wherever I need it to go to. Hey man. Oh. All right, I got a length of cable. It's all plastic so it doesn't need to be grounded. So I think for the sake of making things easy, I'm just gonna trim this round. I'm not gonna get completely rid of it. I'm just gonna trim it really short. And then for my second trick, Knipex wire strippers are the best wire strippers. Seriously, the best wire strippers, assuming they fit within here, but you know, they're awesome. I've used a lot of wire strippers in my life, a lot of uh, automatic wire strippers and the like. These are definitely my favorite. Line voltage off. No, you left it plugged in. It's fine. <laughs> these things are awesome. These are uh, seven strand, seven strand. I think these are either some brand that I've never heard of, like in the US or they're like Swedish or something. But these are just like old school, super metal, super small jaws. So you can really crimp down. These things are awesome, especially if you're doing crimping like this. All right, let me go get the heat gun because apparently those are heat shrink ones and I kind of want to heat shrink it if it is. Battery powered heat gun, it's awesome. This has got the shield on it. Wait until that starts getting real hot. And you can put the wire, the whatever you're heating, right into it. Concentrates all the heat right where you want it. Just like that. Part of me wants to save this right angle connector because I know that'll make my life a lot easier in the coming minutes. But the other half of me is like, nah, I'll just make this work, which I, I can see how I'll make it work. I also need another P-clamp to put this on here. And it's still heat shrunk and moderately safe. I'm sure there's someone out there who's going, oh, why don't you just use those like trailer splicers? And then you can just splice into the existing wire without cutting the connector. No, those are awful. No sane person should ever use those for anything, including trailers. I would know, I work for a company that designs boat trailers. 
<laughs> Those are terrible. There's a reason that we use proper heat shrunk connectors. Crimped and heat shrunk connectors. I mean, personally, my favorite is soldering, but you know, in a production environment, that's not super realistic. Does it pass the pull test? Yes. Good enough. So I meant to tell you guys that I came out here before I went to work this morning, about 12 hours after the last video where I showed this thing working. And last night when I turned it off, it was at like 16 degrees Celsius or something like that. When I came out here this morning, the water temperature was 17 degrees. And when I got home nine hours later, almost 10 hours later, um, the water temperature was about 19 degrees. So after nearly a day, it maintained decent temperature in here. It certainly wasn't the 27, 28 degrees Celsius that it would normally be um, after sitting out for a day in the hot garage. In case you didn't know, this is an unfurnished, unair conditioned garage. And um, I live in Florida. It's like 90 something degrees out all the time. So got this neutral all good and ready. So let me move some shit out of the way. Oh, I'm demonetized now that I said a bad word. So I almost have it in there. Wiggle it all the way in. All right. The new neutral connector is now connected. This cable now has 120 volt on it. Well, not right now, but it will. <laughs> One clamp, two clamp, redfish, bluefish or whatever. Um, I have the original cover for this. I don't know if I have the screws, but I do have the cover. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to have basically another one of these for um, flipping the, that whole thing on and off. I, I kind of wish this that this was four, a four wire. That way I could just have all of it going through one wire. Maybe I'll go and get some four wire and replace this, but for now this will work. I know this is probably going to stay as it is, so I'm probably just going to leave this. So when your air conditioner is working as an air conditioner, this uh, thermistor is sitting in front of the evaporator, basically on the intake side of the air conditioner temperature switch. And um, it is basically a switch that connects power to the compressor for the air conditioner. So when this thing sees a specific temperature, if it's you set it to, I want it cold in the room and it's reading that it's not cold in the room, it turns on the compressor until it starts sucking in colder air that meets the requirements. And then it turns off basically like a switch. It's just basically a thermostat, that's all it is. And so what I'm going to do is pull it out. Those screws were so rusty it wouldn't even turn out. <laughs> they're like, I don't know, you probably won't be able to see that, but they're like actually legitimately stripped. I usually will keep hardware, but that's too far gone. But I will keep this uh, thermostat switch because it's probably fine. I originally, before I got the temperature controller, I actually thought about using this, get this thermostat, stick it into the water, and then kind of map out what temperature water this thing would you know, switch at and kind of map it out so I can just dial it in on this. But where's the fun in that for one and for two, you know, I like it being a little more accurate than just like kind of ballparking it like these things usually are. So doing it this way is gonna be quite a bit more accurate, I hope. I almost can just fit this in here, man. I mean, I almost might, I can put it sideways. There's not a lot of room deep in there, but it's interesting. I'm gonna go non-destructive right now and then go destructive later. So because these are just quick disconnects, I can just use some male disconnects and go right on in there. One more time for the heat gun. Once you get up the temperature, it's glowing red. Easy peasy. And those should be good. I'm gonna probably uh, just electrical tape these. There'll be a better connection permanently down the road, but I'm just, this is testing purposes only. Send it as is. Put a little bit of electrical tape on it just for the sake of not completely wanting to die. At least not at the current moment. I'm having a couple good days. By the way, I went to a pawn shop uh, yesterday and um, they had a Harbor Freight welder, one of the uh, titanium ones, like a, the titanium professional, whatever. The one that can do MIG and TIG and stick and everything. And they had it for like 200 bucks, which is, it's like a $900 welder or something. 
and I'm very tempted to get it because it does, it, it's missing a couple things. I don't think it has like the TIG torch and I don't have any gas or anything, but obviously oh, a lot of the trailers that I work with at work are welded trailers. I've got good sources for that kind of stuff. I, I have just a really old, really cheap Harbor Freight, you know, just the flux core welder and it's worked fine. I don't really do a lot of welding, but I kind of want to, you know, kind of get into it because it is really cool. So I'm thinking about that. It's 200, 200 bucks. So like a $900 welder for 200 bucks is pretty freaking good. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but I think it's probably a good idea. But I haven't, it's probably, probably I'll decide, yeah, I'm gonna do it and then I go, I'm not gonna have it anymore. I mainly want a welder because we have um, some aluminum, uh, aluminum John boats and they're like riveted John boats. Me and my brother both kind of want to convert them into welded John boats just because, you know, those are a lot better in all the ways. So um, I just don't have any way to weld aluminum and I would like to get into that because it is a very interesting thing. So here's where we are. I got the wire for the signal. I got the wire for the power and we're going to connect this up now. And let me move you over here. Is that better? <laughs> you happier? <laughs> this is really just as simple as this is the cooling side. It's going to be these two terminals over here. So I don't think it really matters which is which, but I know that the black is line. So I'm just going to connect the black to the black. I need to go get a small set of flathead. Put both of these in here. Now I just would, would like to state for the record that uh, this is not a tutorial. I am not a qualified electrician, though I do play one on TV occasionally. I'm not showing you how to wire this up, and you should do things like that on your own accord. And don't do anything that would get you killed. Working with high voltage can get you killed, so you know. Keep that in mind. I would really like to add some uh, crimp ferrule terminals onto this. So it's a little bit better of a connection. I will do that probably in the final version of this, but for right now, for testing purposes, that's totally fine. Alrighty then. So in this, I know the hot is hot and the cold is cold. Neutral is this guy. Twist these guys up. Now I will say that, you know, I'm decently experienced with working with electronics like this and, you know, messing with line voltages and making kind of custom, you know, power supplies and stuff like that. So doing something like this is not, is not uncomfortable for me, but I urge you to not do things like this if you are not comfortable. <laughs> you know, it would not be a good thing. That's all done and good. So let me uh, get this all positioned up and we'll see if she runs her. Hopefully. I just had a slight realization that um, this is now wired before the switch. Technically it's gonna have power all the time, which isn't a bad thing, it's got an on off button. Um, but I just kind of realized that like I, it'll be on even before I turn on the uh, air conditioner and everything. Let me get this propped up somehow. One, two, three block will work for this. Other than that, two, one, two, three blocks. <laughs> All right, so the setup is this thing, power, is connected to power of the air conditioner. The cooling side relay, which is rated for 110 volt AC, which is what this whole system is, is connected to the what was the compressor thermostat. So ideally, I set this correctly, the air compressor kicks on, no problem. All right. Now the, oh yeah, it's kind of yelling me. I forgot to connect the temperature sensor. It's just this really long cable. It's totally fine for this application. I added a handle to this so it opens up nice and easy. So I have all the other, all the, uh, the other two temperature probes that I use for my laser. I, I used to use one. I bought another one because it broke and the other ones that I, well, that was broken started working. So I've just had two connected. I'm mainly just going to leave them connected so I can see kind of how reliable this actually is for temperature. I have a infrared thermometer, which I know isn't great for doing water, but it gets you there. That looks like it is connected. All right, so I now have the temperature probe sensor connected. It shouldn't yell at me this time. Probe in the water. And now I can plug it in. Here goes nothing. It's on. 17.5 degrees Celsius. That is probably exactly what it is. Let me turn on the laser so my other temperature probes start going. This is the new one that I have been using. Um, it seems to be a little bit off, about half a degree. And then my other one 
that was my main one is 18.5 so it's off by a full degree this one's off by a half a degree anyway this is set to that so let me I didn't read the instructions so i don't know how it's supposed to be set did i throw the instructions away probably all right so you allegedly well for one i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to set this Sixteen degrees. It should run, get down to that temperature, and I'm going to check that with my other temperature probes. And once it gets down to sixteen or around it, it should turn off the compressor. It'll probably overshoot it, and that's fine. Um, but let's see what happens. I'll let you watch it in real time. I'm kidding. I'll speed it up. But yeah, let's see what happens. What I did find is that uh, you know it takes a minute for kind of the compressor and the the evaporator to kind of cool down. But once it cools down, it quickly cools down the water. So let's see what happens. All right, we're almost to 16 degrees. It's literally been like two and a half minutes. So I'm gonna see when it gets to 16. I heard it click and the compressor turned off. So now let's see how low it ends up getting to. And it's probably gonna overshoot it because the uh, evaporator is probably starting to ice over and the water is running down the evaporator, kind of cooling it down. So it should just kind of cycle lock on and off, you know, kind of overshoot it, go back up, kick on, keep it down, kick on, keep it down, and it's kind of cycle. But it freaking worked. That's on heat mode, which I don't care about. I don't have heat mode on. Um, it doesn't need to heat the water. I'm okay with it being where it is. Although what I probably will do is put the temperature I want it to switch at maybe at like 17 degrees. That way it doesn't, you know, kind of just sets right in that middle ground. Let me do that right now, actually. That's set to 17 degrees, so it'll kind of stay hopefully in that like 15 and a half to 18 degree range, which is perfect for the laser. Alrighty, so she got down to the temperature that it was set to, turned off, it went down a little bit, stabilized, and as soon as it gets to 17.5 degrees uh, Celsius, it's going to kick back on. So that's awesome. So um, I'm not going to bore you too much with sitting here waiting for water to cool and heat up. Um, but as a proof of concept, this freaking worked. I'm really excited, and I'm excited to see kind of what this can become and how it works in my uh, workflow with the laser itself. I'm going to do a couple updates when it comes to that. I am going to go and kind of button this up and make it look pretty, kind of make probably make a control box for this and kind of do things like that. And I'll, I'll make videos as, as I'm going, but for the most part, this was this is the last in this main series. Once I get this thing finalized, I'll probably make another overview video discussing everything that I did with a little more detail. If any of you want to do this yourself, uh, you'll have a little more guidance than what I kind of mishmashed together. Hopefully you guys found this interesting. I certainly did and I certainly learned a lot and I can't believe it freaking worked and it's working well now. This little thing's controlling this. It's awesome. So anyway, like this video. Let me know. Give me a comment if you uh, want to comment and say something. <laughs> Whatever. But I appreciate um, all the support. Subscribe. All that good things. Anyway, until the next video, I will see y'all later.